So I got a shipment of the new EVSD distortion cannons yesterday. I tell ya, Horizon Prime. Crusader to Microtech in two days. When it comes to making a delivery on time, those guys are badass. And four EVSD cannons, I gotta see what they can do. So I was taking some R&R and &R in Microtech, you know, doing a little skiing, bullseyeing some Womprats in my T-16. But when the package came in, I figured, hey, I gotta go give this a try. After all, I've heard good things about the EVSD cannons. They're supposed to be really effective at knocking out an enemy ship's power. Well, when you're a bounty hunter, you gotta deal with the fact that some contracts want you to bring back the mark alive. Yeah, I know that complicates things, but that's just the way it is. And even if the contract doesn't specify the mark has to come back alive, it's also good to know just how fast your weapons can melt the enemy's shields. So I'm going to take the trusty Vanguard Sentinel over to the Crusader system and pick up a few VHRT missions and see what these babies can do. All right, we'll gain some altitude, punch in a course to Crusader along the way, and hit the Quantum Drive just as soon as we're out of the atmosphere. I'd like to get this done and get back to my cabin. I left a perfectly good cup of peppermint hot chocolate on the stove. Holy shit, did you see that? If we'd had thrusters going when we came out of Quantum Drive, we'd be paced all over that asteroid now. I haven't seen quantum drive issues like that in quite a while, but it does illustrate why you should keep your speed low when entering quantum drive. So the story is, the EVSD distortion cannons mix well with other weapons, particularly MVSAs. Might be true, might not. Only way to find out for sure is to see for myself. And when you pull a trigger for a living, it's always good to know in advance exactly what your ship is capable of. Because you know, if you get taken out, it's not like you're gonna magically wake up in a hospital bed on a space station or some planetary city with a message saying that you've received a new body, like in some video game. You get one shot to do it right. Always just one shot to do it right. Always make it a point never to fight the enemy with the sun in your eyes. If you're in an asteroid field, you won't be able to see rocks right between you and the star. And if the enemy moves sunward, you won't be able to see him either. You can't hit what you can't see. Alright, we're close enough. We're going to steer into them now and engage this band of pirates. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll notice if you look to the right, we have a full EVSD loadout. That's four size two EVSD cannons. For today's flight, we'll be bringing you a Rock'em Sock'em action movie where our hero sucks the energy out of enemy spaceships till they go boom. And in the process, we'll see just how effective these EVSD cannons are. And in fact, we can see they're very effective. We knocked out that hurricane shields on his first quick pass and knocked out his power as well. He's spinning and drifting helplessly at the moment. Let's go ahead and open up with our light strike cannon and do some real damage now. I want to get this guy finished off and see how effective we can be on the other ship types around us. He's got a little power back but his shields remain down and the light strike is hitting him hard. Without a shield to protect it, our hurricane is just a fragile little eggshell waiting to break. And there he goes. Crack. Now to finish the rest of this omelette. Unfortunately, since the last patch, bounty hunting remains very buggy, and the Crusader system is perhaps the buggiest place of all. I've come here because waits for VHRT missions can be long in the other planetary systems, though the performance of the ships and the missions themselves tends to be more consistent, but I've sat in places like Hurston and waited up to 20 minutes for VHRT missions to come up, and since I plan to do 9 missions in total to test out the various weapons loadouts, that's a lot of waiting. What we're going to do today is three missions with each EVSD loadout, and then I'm going to pick the mission that I feel is most representative of each loadout and portray them in this video. This first fight has a loadout of four EVSDs and one Light Strike 5. The next mission will have two EVSDs, two MVSA cannons, and one Light Strike 5. And the final mission will have one EVSD and three MVSA laser cannons, along with one Light Strike 5. 
and we're going to test for each combination's ability to knock out enemy ship power and kill speed. We can already see that the combination of four EVSDs with one light strike size 5 is tremendously effective. In terms of distorting or sucking out the enemy's power, I'd say the EVSDs are even more effective than the ATVS repeaters we covered in the last session. Which is not necessarily to say they're better, the ATVS repeaters have better range, and because they fire faster, they give better coverage. As in you're more likely to hit an enemy ship if it happens to pass quickly through your line of fire. But I wouldn't say that's necessarily better. A lot of it has to do with how accurate your fire is going to be, and, and that depends a great deal on how well you fight your ship and your trigger control. But those are personal, as far as the hardware goes. The EVSD distortion cannons are extremely effective. If I was going to fight an ERT mission, I'd rather have these EVSD distortion cannons than the ATVS distortion repeaters, if for nothing else, simply on the basis that, under the current Star Citizen game dynamics, Cannons tend to be more efficient. And as we've seen here, we've almost instantly knocked out the power in each and every ship type that we've opened up with these four EVSDs on. They make an incredibly powerful combination. I've just knocked out the power in that Hornet and he's drifting rapidly away from me. I think rather than chasing him, I'm just going to send him a missile so we can get on to the next mission. That's going to require a quick stop back at Microtech, change the loadout, and then Quantum Drive back to Crusader for the next one. Alright, I switched the loadout to two EVSD distortion cannons and two MVSA laser cannons along with one size 5 light strike. The light strike, as you probably have seen, has become pretty standard carry for me on the vanguards. I like the light strike's range and I like how well it maintains its power across the full length of its range. It's great at long range and short. Though long range in Star Citizen's current BFM only space combat dynamic is exceedingly short by the actual standards of, well, modern aviation combat. But that's a story for another episode. Alright, that's a Valkyrie, and Valkyries are exceedingly soft targets when you know what you're doing. Easy to distort their power down to zero, and easy to kill with weapons once their shields are down. And just that quick, right there on the second pass, you can see we've taken his power all the way down to zero. He's now a drifting hulk, and helpless. He's gotten his power back online, but it's much too late. He's taken too much damage and he doesn't have shields. So this early in the fight, I can already safely conclude that two MVSA laser cannons with two EVSD distortion cannons is a very effective combination. I don't know that they necessarily melt the enemy's shields any faster than a four EVSD loadout or four MVSA loadout, but they do damage and bring down the enemy's shields awfully quickly. You might recall from the last video, where we tested a two ATVS distortion repeater and two MVSA laser cannon combination. I found that the pair of ATVS distortion repeaters were only marginally effective. They would knock out the power of an enemy ship, but struggled to do so with anything larger than a small fighter. And the pair of MVSA laser cannons had typically done so much damage by the time the power was knocked out, at that point a mere breath would finish off the enemy ship. But a pair of EVSD distortion cannons combined with MVSA laser cannons does make an effective combination. Personally, I wouldn't use it. I prefer more specialized weapons combinations. It gives me a better sense of what I'm going to do with my ship. Did you see just there? I got rammed by an enemy. That's an aspect of the AI that really needs to be fixed. Something like that would never happen in anything realistic. That would be the end of both ships. But since the last patch, AI has enemy ships ramming you like bumper cars. It's bad enough when you're bounty hunting, but if there happens to be a friendly AI ship nearby, a law enforcement ship for example, and they ram you and they take damage, you'll get a crime stat for it. 
I've taken out that ship's power, and he's about to hit an asteroid behind him. There he goes. That's one of the cool things about distortion. You can use objects such as asteroids or the gravity of a planet to destroy your enemies. Which theoretically means that in the right circumstances, you can use distortion weapons to take out a ship way above your weight class. It's a concept I'll have to play with sometime. But here's a great illustration of one of the other fun bugs in the latest patch, invisible ships. He's not technically invisible, you can see him, but you'll notice there's no targeting icon. You literally cannot lock onto this guy. They are killable if you want to stick around and keep hammering at them, but we're not going to learn anything from this, so we're going to move on to the next mission. All right, in this final mission, I've gone to Microtech and changed the loadout once again. This time we have one EVSD distortion cannon and three MVSA laser cannons. And as always, our size 5 light strike. This time I'm going to hold off on using the light strike 5. I'll probably end up taking some damage for that, but I want to see how effective this combination is at both disabling and killing the enemy. Frankly, I want to see if you can disable the enemy before you destroy them with this combination. Because I already know that the MVSAs will peel away an enemy ship's shields really fast. Oh, and look, we just got rammed again. It took out one of the enemies, and also took out the port side of my ship. One of the things that you should take note of here, though, is the vanguards are amazingly durable. And I'll emphasize again, if this was anything like reality, me and my ship would both be dead. But you can knock out half a vanguard, and the ship can stay right in the fight. All of its weapons are center mounted, so essentially, unless you lose your nose, which means you lose your cockpit and die too, you still have full armament. All of your hardware is in the center of the ship, so you still have full shielding, full power. You don't have full thrust, but we're only navigating over a moon, so we can work with that. So we're just going to sit here, stay in the fight, and continue our combat test. Those missiles hit me before my noise was able to pull them away, but it's no big deal. The shields were able to easily absorb that. You can see here I keep knocking out that Drake Buccaneer's power with just the one EVSD distortion cannon. At the same time, I'm also doing him a lot of damage with the three MVSA laser cannons. And well, that's about as much damage as you can do. So he's out of the fight. Let's focus our attention on that Cutlass now. Question being, can I knock out his power before I destroy him? Maybe, but the problem again with this loadout is I, I can probably knock out his power before I destroy him. But if I want to keep him knocked out, like if I was actually going to aim to pirate his ship, I wouldn't have that option with this loadout. His shields are down. I'm watching the EM to see if we can cause him to lose power. And yep, his power is down. But it should come as no surprise that if I keep firing only my size 2 weapon, I can keep his power down, but he's also going to take a lot of physical damage. Now I hope one day CIG gets around to implementing more fire groups on a ship, because if there was even a third fire group option, I could switch over to firing just the one EVSD distortion cannon. For right now I'd like to keep his power down till he hits the ground, but I'm fairly sure I'm going to kill him long before he hits the ground. Well, he's gotten his power back and he's coming back for more, so yeah, killing him's definitely going to happen. So as to the question of EVSD distortion cannons, these guys are amazing when, when used in groups of four on a vanguard. They will quickly strip the shields and power from any VHRT target you may go up against, often in as little as one pass. And they're fairly effective when used in pairs, at least with MVSA laser cannons, and I would imagine with any other weapon type as well. As a pair, they still manage to sap the power out of any VHRT target. Not as fast as a group of four, you won't strip your enemy's shields and disable their power in a single pass. But it's quite effective, and you do get the advantage that, with a two EVSD and two offensive weapon grouping, you have more offensive firepower and options to work with. And even one EVSD distortion cannon can take out the power of any VHRT ship that I came across in any of the three missions that I tried that loadout on. However, three offensive size two weapons, especially the MVSA laser cannons that are unique to the vanguards, do so much damage that you'll have mostly killed the enemy ship before you take out his power. 
and even if you do take out the enemy ship's power before you destroy him, by the time you've knocked out his power, he's only an eggshell, ready to crack with the next hit or two. So for myself, I would still go for a dedicated weapons loadout or EVSDs in combination with a size 5 assault weapon on a vanguard, or I'd just go for an all-offensive loadout, like four MVSA laser cannons in combination with a size 5 light strike. I would advise against using the EVSD combination with ballistic weapons, as the ballistic weapons will then be your only way to do actual physical damage to the enemy. So whatever you're up to, you'll end up running out of ammo really fast. Thank you for joining me for this weapons loadout analysis. There'll be lots more to come on Cerulean Skies, and if you like what you see, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It really helps.